Hello, welcome back to my channel. And today I will be vlogging about the adventures of Marky and Paul. Now I've decided I'm gonna cut this up into parts because it only will give my story justice, right? Because my story for Tennessee is so long, like it's either gonna be a really long video or I can break it into parts and you guys can enjoy it on different days. And I think I'm gonna go that route. Okay, so this first part is gonna be about the initial takeoff to Tennessee, right? So we're gonna rewind this back to 2014 when we first started discussing moving out of state, right? So we were really into this show called Alaskan Bush People. Like, just stay with me. So we really were big into this show, Alaskan Bush People, right? And Paul, like, loved the idea of moving to Alaska and being self-sufficient and like building his own cabin and like going moose hunting and all that stuff. First of all, that threw a really big red flag up at me because Paul is not a physical person. Paul does not like physical work. How is he gonna build me a cabin if he don't like to be physical? Also, your boy can't even bait a hook. How is he gonna provide fam like food for the family? Also, he doesn't like the cold, so I don't know why he thought moving to Alaska would be a good idea. My first thought when he said he wanted to move to Alaska is like, yeah, I can just picture us getting eaten by a bear. Fantastic. This was short-lived because I made reality set in, okay? I told him, I said, you don't like to do physical manual labor how are you gonna build a cabin not only that how are we gonna ship our whole house to Alaska do you know how expensive that is also it is expensive to live there because they have to ship and import everything in it's just not realistic unless you you know are starting from nothing like but we already had a lot of stuff okay so it just wasn't gonna work but we really liked the idea of like living self-sufficient being in the country and doing our own thing so we kind of ventured off to that idea, like we could live in the country and have a garden and be like self-sufficient in some ways, you know, do what we wanted to. And we, that's possible and not have to move to Alaska. And we don't gotta deal with the bears. So we kind of threw the idea around maybe move somewhere else where we could do that. Because like here in Indiana, the land is expensive. Just to buy like one acre, like you're talking like 40 grand. It's ridiculous but I put that on the back burner and it just wasn't like convenient at the time because I didn't want to leave my mom who was sick and she was dealing with stage four bone cancer. Um, she has had cancer since 2005 when it was breast cancer and then shortly after it metastasized to her brain, spine, shoulder, neck, liver, lungs, like she was full of it. And I wasn't trying to be, you know, 12 hours away if something happened. And uh, she's such a booger. She, for one, didn't tell us, anybody, even my stepdad, like how serious she really had cancer. You know, she would go to a doctor's appointment and she would come back and be like, well, my tumor marker, you know, has went down, you know, I'm doing better, I'm doing good. And she like tried to eat really healthy to, you know, kill the cancer. Like she just was bullheaded and never wanted to admit she was going to die from cancer. Um, she didn't like to talk about death, didn't want to talk about death. So literally her death was a really big surprise to us. I mean, she had her ups and downs, but we didn't realize like how bad it was until after she had passed away. So anyways, um, like a week before Thanksgiving, my mom did pass away and that was in 2016. So after she passed away, I told my husband, I said, you know what, let's just pack up and move, move somewhere. I don't care where, let's just get out of here. I was just really tired of being in the same place I've always been with the same people that do the same things. Um, I didn't want to be stuck in this life that my mom had built for everybody, for everybody just to destroy it. And what I mean by that is when my mom was alive, we celebrated all the holidays like 4th of July. We had 4th of July party, you know, we had family dinners every Sunday and then it's like she was the glue and when she passed away nobody did that anymore like nobody carried on her legacy um it's really depressing and i i didn't want to be in that anymore i wanted to go ahead and start my own life do my own thing um since i didn't have my mom here to do her thing 
So when this conversation took place, it was like a really big conversation. And this was in February of 2017. And we were already um, remodeling our house because we had bought a fixer upper. And um, we decided like, let's really push forward and we'll find where we want to live and we'll make it happen. Like my husband's like, I will make this happen. And he did make it happen. So we decided Tennessee and you're like, out of all the places in the United States to move, why did you move to Tennessee? Because Tennessee is absolutely gorgeous. Um, if you've never been there, I suggest to go check it out. We moved to the east side of Tennessee. Why it just like happened by chance. We were actually gonna move like on the west part of Tennessee, like between Memphis and Nashville, which is a really bad part. Don't go there. Um, but we had other plans fall into place so that's where we landed now two months prior to our big move like when we first initially decided we were gonna move out of state uh, my husband was unemployed for those two months because before we decided we were moving are you done oh my god anyways so before we decided we were moving out of state. My husband had tried to work at a trailer factory. This is where it falls back onto he is not a physical person and he is not about fast pace. That did not work out. So then we made the initial decision we were gonna move. So we lived off of the 401k that he pulled out from his previous job where he was gone all the time. And um, from that we got about $20,000 which we were set to live for a little bit, but not a long time, because if you know, money goes fast. Um, and after like, they took their taxes out, the government, that's what we got. So we had enough money to finish what we needed to do on the house and get the U-Haul, put two months down on rent and a deposit wherever we were gonna go, buy groceries and things we needed for the move, which we did. So with that being said, my husband started to bust out like looking for jobs down there because of course he's the sole provider like he has the job set skills that pay a lot of money which i do not have currently so we were depending on him and because my husband is so impulsive he got a call about a job interview like the next day and so he gets off the phone he's like okay we're going on a road trip and i'm like we are and like where he's like oh we're going down to Tennessee I got an interview and I'm like okay with two kids he's like yep let's go so here we go rolling down 65 right and um, this is awful let me tell you with two kids because they don't like to be cooped up anywhere for a long amount of time which is that that's what's what has happened and um, it was beautiful driving down there but I did not like to deal with the crying and the screaming and the hooting and the hollering so to save some time on my video um, he did not end up taking that job he got another offer from a different company on the other side of Tennessee which luckily worked out better um, so here we are we you know, it's just a couple weeks after we went and visited, we were looking for a house to rent, which there was nothing in our price range that was not an apartment. It was extremely hard to find a house to rent like in our budget. Like there's no way we can afford $1,200. There's no way. With that being said, um, that is a main reason why I picked a location I had to pick or that I did pick. Um, his company told him he had to live an hour from Nashville, so it had to be an hour from Nashville, right? And if you go anywhere north and south of Nashville, it is very expensive. Um, so, and I didn't wanna live on the west side because when we visited the west side, it was kinda ghetto and I didn't like it. The crime rate was really high. So I'm like, okay, let's look on the east side. So I looked over there and it was cheaper and it was still really pretty but it was still really expensive. There was still nothing. Um, I searched for days, 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 yeah. days, it felt like. And finally, something popped up. It was super small. It was like 900 square feet, but it was a house and it was something we could afford. 
So, um, and I found one more backup as well because you never drive nine hours to look at one thing. You don't do that. And we learned that. So we set up to go down and look at it right. And this company has like a lock in the door and they give you the code and you go in and look at it yourself, right? Nobody comes and shows you. And let me say this um, rental property um, company is awful. It's called Stevens Realty. I do not recommend anybody to ever rent from them. And I will tell you why in my story. Anyways, so we drive down there. It's me, my husband, and our niece. And she is like 10, nine or 10 at the time. So it was something fun for her to had my sister watch my kids while we drove down there. So we like dropped them off like three o'clock in the morning because it's like a eight and a half hour drive without stopping. Well, seven and a half eight and a half, something like that. Anyways, so we drive. And I drive most of the way until we get to like the mountain part where it's like super hilly and curvy because then I get sick. Oh Lord, I get sick because I am like a motion sickness person. Like it's really just cars, like in the boat, like on the lake, like I'm fine. But in the car, if I'm not driving, oh God. There's no way I am enjoying going down there and looking at these rental properties right now. There's no way, like I've got this banging headache. I'm super nauseated, I can barely keep my eyes open. Well, we finally get to this first place, right? Oh God, we pull up and it's this like little shack looking thing. Like it looks worse than like it did in the picture. Um, and we're like, okay, you know, looks are not everything. So we put the code in and we walk in and as soon as we open this door right we are like blasted in the face with cat urine and which is funny because on the listing it says no pets allowed um so blasted with cat urine it doesn't matter what room we walk in it smells like cat urine like bad cat urine um so you walk in and you've got what we think is the living room but it's super small like it's bedroom size uh you can turn right and there's what we think is a bedroom it's like looks like it was a garage but they converted it into like some bust ass bedroom right okay so then we walk out of there and into the kitchen which is like no bigger than like a four by four room um, it's got the stove, a fridge, and one little counter space, and a cup, like maybe three cupboards. And I'm like, oh my god, we have two deep freezers. Where are we putting these at? Where am I putting food at? Like, there's no cupboard space, and it stinks. Okay, and then there was a second bedroom, which the listing said three, but it was two small bedrooms. Which, we're like, how are we even going to fit a twin size bed in here? That's how small it was. And they wanted like seven fifty for it? No. So luckily we had this backup one. And it was about 30 minutes from this other house, right? So here we go on the agonizing 30 minute drive to the second house. And I'm really hoping, I am praying to the gods above. Like, please let this house be the one because I'm so sick and I cannot endure to have to either come back down here or drive around for a few more hours looking. So I'm trying to like close my eyes and take like a short nap to like recuperate on this 30 minute drive. And it's like my husband, my husband like purposely took like the back roads, like through the mountains and stuff because it's like every torturous hump we go over, like I feel like I'm gonna vomit. It's awful. Okay, so we're finally almost there. The GPS says we have like a half a mile and then the destination will be on the right. So we're driving and we're driving and we see no sign and it's like, you're here. And we pass it and we're like, where's here? Like we see nothing, we just see hills. So we turn around and from the other direction, you can see a house up on the left-hand side, um, up on a hill, like it was hidden by like a hill. So we pull in there and we're like, Oh my God, this house is busted ass. Like, it's it's bad, in bad shape. Okay, I had to come in the house because my kids would not leave me the heck alone. Okay, anyways, so we pull up and it's like super busted, right? Like, we're like, how is this even livable? So they had a lock with the, the code or whatever on the basement door. Um, so we walk in there 
and then we get this funky smell. It's not cat urine, luckily, but it's really funky. And the basement, of course, is kind of really run down, and it's got this like creamish color ceramic tile. But it's stained with orange, and we're like, is that rust? Later in the story, we learn what that's from. Anyways, so we walk up the stairs into the kitchen, which let me tell you, for a rental company, this is really poor. Like they did not take care of their property or even attempt to. Um, anyways, we go in the kitchen. There's grime on the cabinets, grime on the countertop, the floor, like nothing has been cleaned. And so we're checking the house out. I mean, it's, it's livable, but it's gonna need some bleach. Like it's gonna need cleaned. And so we're looking around, you know, the yard's not been mowed. Like, it's god awful. Like, if you picture it, like this little shack house up on the hill, lots of really tall grass just flowing in the wind. And it's just like, it's almost scary looking. It's like abandoned. So that's our thoughts. So my husband's like super skeptical. He's like, you know, I don't even know if this is gonna stay on, you know, the foundation with us living here. Like, that's how bad it is. But I was like, listen, Paul, like there's nothing else available. And especially in our price range, like everything is taken up. Like we don't have any other options. Like we need to like take action and just rent this house. So the whole drive there, like back home, like he thought about it and he's like, you know what? We just got to do it. Like it's, it's not a, a permanent thing. So, um, and here's a really, another shady thing about this company. They don't do phone calls. Like the whole thing was through email. Like they sent us a contract and stuff and they're like, okay, well you need this, this, and this, and then send us the deposit. And so we had to get a cashier's check to send to them and we are hoping and praying this isn't a scam. Okay, because the, the two houses we looked at were awful and you know, we couldn't get a hold of somebody on the phone. But we're like, we don't have another choice. Like we have to be moved in like a couple weeks because we had someone buying our house. So we're running out of time. We're just like, okay, let's just do it and get it over with. So April 25th rolls around. One day after my daughter's birthday, we had a birthday party for her. Um, we do the stupidest thing ever. Like I don't recommend this to anybody. We literally packed up our entire house and put in a U-Haul in one day. I can't tell you how exhausted, like mentally and physically I was from doing that. But not only that, I really resented my husband, like to make me do that in one day. So, okay, that I didn't go into this all happy and cheery like you think I would have. I was pretty pissed. We had to pack up all in one day because on April 26th, we were closing on our house in the morning and then we were taken off for Tennessee after that. So it was kind of crazy and you're like, Girl, why didn't you pack up, you know, here and there? Well, I did a little bit, but like our house was kind of small and we had a lot going on between he was gone working. He did like two weeks of training before he came back two days before we moved. And then we had my daughter's fourth birthday party. So it was a little chaotic. So we did it all in one day. Plus he's like, oh, no, no biggie. We can pack up all in one day. And I'm like, Okay. So anyways, my husband goes, closes on the house. Um, he goes to the dealership and sells his, he's got a Ford Fusion he bought brand new just a year ago on our wedding day. He sells it because he's getting a company vehicle and it's gonna be too much to drive the U-Haul, try to haul you know, the car behind it and then have me drive my flex, just too much. So he sold it back to the dealership. Um, so here it is. We take off. We're driving. We can only do 55. Like, are you freaking kidding me? So we spent two days driving because we could only do 55 on like an eight, eight to nine hour drive. It turns into nine hours when you have kids because you have to stop and make potty breaks, get food, gas. Like, it's crazy. So it took us two days. We drove from where we're at. So we drove where we're at to Elizabethtown, Kentucky. Um, and that took us until like eight or nine o'clock at night and we finally got a hotel. Mind you, I have two children, my husband, I had two cats at the time, I got three now, and a dog. 
all with me in my flex while my husband was driving the U-Haul. So I had the bad end of it, okay? So we get a hotel, we take a break, we get up early the next morning and we chug along and try to finish, okay? So we get to our destination and we're really excited to be able to sit down and take a break. We already stopped and got the keys, which speaking of, when we pulled in there to the rental property, um, we're like, okay, we're here to pick up our keys to move into our rental house. And they're like, oh, well, we don't have you moving in until tomorrow. Like, what? They're like, yeah, our contract says the 28th. It's the 27th. I'm like, nah, honey. My contract that you originally sent me says the 27th, so we're moving in today. So after some confusion and some some arguing, um, we finally head off to our rental property. We get there only to be held up because somebody is pressure washing the deck that they hired to pressure wash and clean the deck, right? Keep that in mind. They paid somebody to clean the deck. The deck that matters the least, right? Well, we had to wait 45 minutes to get in there and start moving stuff in for this guy to get done. Nothing on the guy, right? It's all the rental property's fault. We get in there to see the house is in the same condition, which we were kind of skeptical because the yard still wasn't mowed when we pulled in. So we get in the house and it's in the same condition that we came and saw it like three weeks ago. They didn't clean it. They didn't pick stuff up. You know what they did? They walked in there and they put little scents in each closet. How nice of them. So not only am I like disgusted, I'm really disgusted to think that my children have to walk on this floor because I have a not even one year old yet. Okay, he's like nine months old currently and my daughter's four so mm. not only that my husband didn't think when he packed the u-haul he put all of our beds blankets pillows clear in the back of the u-haul right so he's like so frustrated right now and exhausted that he doesn't even want to get anything out of the u-haul like he's being paul like he's being bipolar um and i'm like where are we gonna sleep he's like we can sleep on the floor i'm like the hell we are like i'm gonna crawl in there and grab some shit. so luckily my stepdad and my younger brother had already agreed to drive down after my stepdad got off work to help us like unload the u-haul but they didn't even get down there until like 10 o'clock at night. So luckily by then I was able to persuade Paul to like, hey, let's at least get our mattress and the kids mattresses out of the U-Haul and I would dig in there and grab some pillows and blankets. Like we cannot sleep on the floor. So he mustered up the patience and the energy to get in the U-Haul and let me mind you, um, that was not without cussing at each other. It's okay. We're cool now. We we apologized. So they show up and everybody's like, all right, let's just go to sleep. We'll get up in early in the morning and we'll do our thing. And they helped us unload it. And that is just not even like the beginning of the adventure in Tennessee. It is crazy. But I'm gonna stop right here and save the rest of it for the next part. So you're gonna have to stay tuned in for part two. So stay tuned and make sure you're... So stay tuned and make sure you watch out for part two of the ventures of Marky and Paul.